Philip, we both know that AI and AI consciousness is in the public square. It's a very important topic. Um, and I want to lay my cards right on the table. Um, the impression one gets from the technology communities, which I, of course, greatly respect, is that AI consciousness is inevitable, that it will be happy, something few people think it has already happened, the vast majority think it's not, but that it, it, it will happen. People say whether it's 10 years or 50 years, a lot of people are closer to the 10. Um, I don't subscribe to that view. I subscribe to the view that the structure or possibility of AI consciousness is directly related to your theory of consciousness as opposed to something that you can assume. I'm not saying AI consciousness won't happen, but I'm saying it is directly dependent upon your theory of consciousness. So you need to have a theory of consciousness first, and then you can determine whether that theory allows or accelerates whatever AI consciousness. Given all the engineering um, uh, sophistication of the media, this is, we're talking about in principle. So I wanna ask you, in terms of the uh, Catholic Church and the, and the Catholic Church's position on AI consciousness, because this involves the nature of humans and souls and, 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 and uh, bodies and everything else, um, what is the Catholic Church position on AI consciousness? And what is, what is your own as a, philosopher, uh, as a philosopher and a philosopher of mine in particular within the Catholic tradition? If consciousness arises out of the power of the soul in the human being, and machines don't have souls, then we are not going to get to consciousness uh, for AIs or for machines. You're absolutely right. You need a theory of consciousness. And David Chalmers says very clearly, we have no scientific explanation, or no adequate scientific explanation of what is consciousness we have, a, we have philosophical views about what is consciousness, but we don't have a scientific explanation. How are we going to understand if AI instantiates a consciousness? Now, Ray Kurzweil has a, a great phrase that I enjoy uh, quoting, and that is, if we can't tell the difference, yeah. is there one? And what he's referring to is the behavior of machines that we understand as conscious, even though they aren't. Uh, and Chalmers goes into this where he talks about zombies. A zombie is a human being which is uh, behaving as a, a, a conscious being, but does not have consciousness. In, in, indistinguishable in terms of behavior, right. words, everything else. And, and Chalmers rejects that. He, he's not, he doesn't agree that you can get behavior which is ex, ex, exhibiting consciousness without consciousness. Now, at the university, we, we're having a lot of debates about this now. Uh, I mean, not, not just us, but, but that my experience uh, in Boston is that uh, the consensus right now, and, and this, like you said, this may change. The consensus right now is that um, quickly AIs are going to exhibit what we understand as conscious behavior, but they won't be conscious. And so some of my colleagues are saying, let's call it something else. Mm. And I'm not sure what to call it. Now, there's a group of uh, professors at MIT which are coming up with uh, different theories about artificial agency. Uh, so, so they're keeping the artificial in there so we understand that yeah. they're not conscious the way human beings are conscious. Mm. Yeah, we start with, art, with intelligence and artificial general intelligence. And everybody agrees that you know, machines have been intelligent in some sense for a long time, increasingly so. And AI right now with large language mo mo models are, are getting close to the, the arena of artificial general intelligence, whether they, they're now not. But almost every, everybody will agree that they'll be there. And then the question is, once you have artificial general intelligence, you know, is consciousness, does com consciousness come along for the ride automatically at that <laughs> point? And many people think it does. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, you, you're saying it doesn't. I'm saying, you know, it depends on the theory of consciousness. Or the theory of meaning. Uh, so, so does a machine understand anything? Like when you talk to ChatGPT, does it understand what you're saying? 
And that depends on what you mean by What you need a theory of meaning, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I suggest not. I, I think um, uh, large language models use statistics and uh, variables in order to come up with what we, uh, what we right. understand is understanding, but I don't think ChatGPT understands it. Yeah, now, and, and that's why uh, Chat G, future generations and its competitors, Gemini or whatever, uh, are um, uh, easily will pass the, the, the old way of discerning consciousness, which was the Turing test. Correct. Which is that you know could could uh, um, uh, double-blind individuals just hearing the output discern which is the artificial and which is general. And the Turing test, if you pass it, that means you're conscious. That means you can't discern one or the other. And I think everybody agrees that. Artificial general intelligence will pass that, or some, already, has. already has in some cases passed the Turing test, and so that really is does not work anymore. No, we need we need a new standard. <clears throat> we need a new um, model or framework yeah. in order to uh, address these issues. Remember, once we get to artificial general intelligence, the step to artificial super intelligence will be almost immediate. Yeah. So we're, we're creating an intelligence which will surpass our own. Uh, and, and, and again, I don't say that lightly. It's, maybe it's not intelligent the way we are, but it certainly exhibits intelligent behavior uh, which uh, we can interact with. Yeah. Uh, Kurzweil's uh, famous comment, he says uh, that uh, they'll certainly act as if they're conscious, so we might, we should assume they're conscious, because if we don't, they'll get mad at us. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you ask ChatGPT, are you conscious, it could say yes. I mean, it's just an algorithm that could respond. Uh, uh, or, or it could say, no, are, are you self-aware that this would be another way of saying, you know, we see that uh, depicted in movies. Do these, are these machines self-aware? Right. Uh, the Bicentennial Man was one of the first uh, depictions of Hollywood uh, of, of, a, of an android, of a machine that becomes self-aware. And then Westworld was another one based on Michael Crichton's book. But the, <clears throat> what, what is going to happen in, in, this, in Kurzweil's uh, view also, is that we're going to treat it as if it were conscious. Now, this is going to bring in a tremendous amount of ramifications. For example, legal status. Are we gonna give AIs legal status? Uh, self-driving cars. You know, I was born in Mountain View, California, the first city to get permission mm -hmm. to use self-driving cars because that's where Google has its headquarters. Um, what happens in an accident? Elon Musk faces this issue with Tesla also. What happens in an accident, who is responsible? Hmm. So if, if we, and self-driving cars is, is, is uh, a close understanding of what artificial intelligence is on a practical level, because these are cars moving around the, uh, the, the city. You know, the classical example of a child runs out in the middle of the street and what does the car do? Does it stop? to avoid hitting the okay. child, or does it keep going so it doesn't get hit from behind <laughs> uh, and protects its own passengers, et cetera. So these are dilemmas which are typical. But the problem with self-driving cars is not the technology, but it's the legal ramifications. Who is responsible? And I don't know if we have a framework that answers that yet. Um, Eliezer Dukowski has a, a wonderful, example. well, it's a scary example of what an AI could do in the future. An AI, and the technology is there today. This could happen today. An AI can send a request to the Centers of Disease uh, Control in Atlanta, Georgia, which is the largest in the United States, and ask for a deadly virus to be FedExed to uh, someone in uh, Reno, Nevada. And that person would take the virus and put it into a reservoir outside of Reno and kill within a few days 100,000 people. An AI could do that. It, it could make a request. It could forge the, the signature of the Surgeon General. It could you know, ask Federal Express to accept. So it could do this all by itself today. And of course, Yudovsky asks the question, why doesn't it do it? And he says, because it's, no, it's not yet up to that. It's not yet up to that. But we could program an AI to do that. And uh, that, that's scary. That's scary because you're talking about a lot of people uh, who would end up dead.